let's pull up the polls. So we got this uh, new polling in aggregate for you guys. Kamala Harris, of course, is winning in aggregate with uh, all the latest polls showing he's up one, one, four, three, three, giving her an aggregate of 0.5 percent ahead of Donald Trump. But let's do this. <laughs> well, it's still within the margin of error. Yeah. When they compare this to Joe Biden at the same time in 2020, Biden was up. Uh, with point, well, I'm sorry, with 6.4 percent ahead. Clinton was 6.9. Of course, uh, Trump still beat Hillary Clinton. Kamala Harris is at 0.5. This still does favor a Donald Trump presidency. But let's do this. I got 270 to win. You know, I love to bring it up. And currently the polling shows with with all of the safer states, you've got 251 Republican, 226 Democrat. So let's check this. Arizona. Currently, Donald Trump is winning Ari- uh, Arizona. That's Nevada. Wrong one. So let's do uh, Arizona goes red. Then we've got Nevada, and Trump is currently winning in Nevada. However, I don't think it's fair to say he's winning Nevada because Insider Advantage's poll, the only other one which has Trump up 10, is from before Kamala Harris. So it's actually Joe Biden. I don't think you could use that. That doesn't make sense. Since she announced that she was running and Biden stepped down, she's up two. So I say we give Nevada to, uh, to the Democrats there just, to, just you know, to, to play devil, devil's advocate. Wisconsin, Trump has by 0.2. And I do think it's fair to say point two. So we'll, we'll give that edge to Donald Trump over in Wisconsin. Let's check uh, Michigan. Michigan currently held by Harris. So we'll make that one uh, blue. And then I, be- I do believe Trump is easily winning in Pennsylvania. Yeah, 1.8 points. There's no poll that has Kamala Harris ahead in Pennsylvania. So this is what's really strange to me. I agree. Why did she choose the guy from Minnesota, which is blue, when she needed Pennsylvania to swing things? Now, if she won Pennsylvania with this current polling, Trump still wins with 272. But at the very least, that's what you want to try, right? I got a, I got a theory. My suggestion is that Kamala's actually doing substantially worse than people realize. The polls are way over favoring her. Yeah, sure. And their internal polling shows that they're actually weak in Minnesota. The polling shows that in Minnesota, it may be Democrat, but barely. It could be a toss-up state that we're not considering. They recognize they could actually lose Minnesota. And so their thought process was, let's get Tim Waltz. Hopefully that can win us some some edge in Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. But we need a defensive barrier in Minnesota. Otherwise, we lose that, too. Yeah, I think you're right. I think that she is not secure that she has her base. And the base is far left. The base Mm -hmm. is a... You know, they they hate what's going on in Israel. They really want America to stop supporting, you know, Israel at all costs. That's one thing. They're much further to the left on trans stuff and LGBTQ stuff, even than Biden, who hosted Dylan Mulvaney at the White House to hear about how children need sex changes and all of that. And I think Kamala Harris and the Democrats know that they are that they need to go get that base. And that's why she's got to go left here. Yeah. Which is not. The, the common political wisdom. I mean, normally you'd go left during the primary and then center toward the general election. But since she didn't actually run in any primaries and wasn't even considered to be a candidate for all of these months, she's got to go after her base right now. Yeah, I think you're right. I also have this theory that um, part of the infrastructure of both the media and the people who have joined the Kamala Harris campaign uh, believe that abortion rights is the number one issue and will change everything. You were hearing this messaging before in January. Um, AP News still does have an abortion tab going. Uh, We can check up on all of these things. And of course, there is legislation that's occurring. It's not that it's not an issue. Uh, But they they sent uh, Harris out on this nationwide, quote unquote, women's rights, but really pro-abortion tour. And that's actually the first place that I know of that she met Walls. He toured a Planned Parenthood with her. And so in some ways, I think that there is misunderstanding of what's really driving people to the polls from the people who are advising the Harris campaign. I think they believe that progressive issues like they might not be able to win the voters who are saying we don't agree with what the Biden Harris administration did in regards to Israel and Palestine. But we generally are very supportive of women's rights. They think if they message hard enough on certain issues, they'll be able to uh, basically progressive coerce everyone they need to support them. I don't think it'll work. All right. So we we took a look at the polls, right? Let's play another game. However, I'm going to reset the map and let's let's take a look at the poly market betting odds. Pennsylvania going to uh, Kamala Harris in the betting odds. Betting odds currently favor Kamala Harris to win Pennsylvania. Wisconsin, Kamala Harris currently favored to win in Wisconsin. 
Oh boy, you see where this is going. Michigan, Kamala Harris heavily favored to win in Michigan. This is again, poly markets predictions. Nevada goes Trump, Arizona goes Trump. So uh, Nevada and Arizona, and look at that. Democrats win, 270 to 268. Mm. North Carolina, Georgia, whatever, that goes to Donald Trump. With this in, uh, in mind, I actually don't think polls matter. I actually think the <laughs> betting odds matter substantially more. You think so? Betting odds are the wisdom of the crowd. And often you have to consider that there are some people who, who, who know things, too, who are, making these, who are making bets and large bets, which could swing things. If there's internal polling suggesting that uh, Kamala's doing better than people realize, the reason maybe why she chose Tim Waltz is because they're actually not worried about Pennsylvania. They're, they've got an advantage there that Trump, Trump people in the polls aren't considering. Or more importantly, perhaps there's someone who knows there's a shadow campaign, perhaps, and they're not going to lose the, uh, the Rust Belt. And the blue wall? Maybe. I mean, it's interesting because I had said a couple of weeks ago, I think if one of the reasons she wouldn't pick Shapiro is because they do not think they can win Pennsylvania. They're looking at it as an abandoned cause. And so this late in the game, they're pouring all the resources. Well, she's super, op- she's super opposed to fracking. And that's like mm-hmm. a that's a big job thing in Pennsylvania. And that's I mean, strange. the attempted assassination of President Trump in Pennsylvania was incredibly impactful. I just think that he'll have strong turnout there. Um, but, you know, all of this to say these are all strategic decisions that these campaigns are making because things are coming down to the wire. I mean, there is not enough time for Kamala Harris to really uh, develop a strong enough message. At least that's my sense of it, because she doesn't have one right now. Everything they're doing is on the attack because she has nothing to offer the voters.